So just using the tip of my finger, I'm rubbing all the masculine fluid off the tree. And we can see the value of having that there. I've now got a nice bit of, a nice strip of white paper to work into for the tree. Before I do that though, I think I'll just suggest a few trees behind it. I'm just taking a mixture of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue and using the liner writer brush to keep the branches really fine. I'm just suggesting some the fine branch work on these trees behind the old barn. It's a fine line between doing too many branches and not enough. So I'm just keep checking that I'm not doing too many and overworking it. Okay, and now we'll get onto the main tree. So I'm going to mix a couple of colors for a light and a dark side. And I'm using a number four brush. And for the light side, I'm going to take a mixture of raw sienna and burnt sienna. It's very important when you're doing something like this that you have both colors ready or you end up with a, a dark brown stripe rather than it merging. And for the dark side, I'm using burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. I've now got a number eight brush loaded up with the lighter color and the light's coming from the left. So it's on the left hand side of the trunk that I need to concentrate the lighter color. Running that right up the trunk. I'm not going all the way up the trunk because I need to be putting the dark color in straight away. So I'm going back to the bottom and dropping that in at the shadow side, at the darker side of the trunk. And look how the colour just wanders across and creates a sort of rounded cylindrical shape. Now I'm going to repeat the exercise, working further up the tree, taking a couple of branches off as well. And then more dark, dropping that in and just letting it creep across. You do have to keep your eye on it because if it wanders across too far, you lose the light side of the trunk. And what I'm going to do to remedy that is clean the brush. It's a number four brush, clean it, take most of the moisture off so it's just damp and then use it to lift some of the darker color out, emphasizing the light side. And when we get down to the ground, I'm just going to put a few little bits of suggestions of grasses and things just to make the tree look like it's really there planted in the ground. Now I'm going to take more of this dark brown mixture and carry on working with the tree, still with this number four brush for the time being. And I'm gonna carry on right out of the top of the picture. It's nice the way you get these long branches that sort of streak across the sky. And we get a feeling of, uh, of getting glimpses of the winter sky through the branch work. And then with this really fine brush, and the liner writer is ideal for this because it makes tiny little thin branches that look far more realistic. Nothing spoils winter trees more than if your branches are thick and stubby. More brush work at this left hand side. It can be a bit awkward painting the left hand side if you're uh, if you're right-handed, can be worth rotating the board till you're in a comfortable position. Streaking across the sky and out of the picture. Okay, now that that's dry, it's time for a bit more shadow. It's quite interesting with snow scenes that at the end of it, you haven't actually got a lot of white paper. And that's because what few bits of white paper are left have a lot more impact if there's some shadow to contrast with them. So I'm going to mix a bit of shadow colour, number 10 brush, a thin wash of ultramarine blue and a wash of ultramarine blue and rose madder. I'll start with the cooler of those two, which is just the thin wash of ultramarine blue and bring this across the middle distance of the picture using a bit of clear water to blend it in and taking care at the moment not to smudge that tree. Just to paint up to it and then behind it, but taking care not to sort of smudge it. And as I come down to the foreground, I'm introducing the ultramarine blue with rose madder. So the shadow looks warmer, nearer to the front of the scene. Bit of clear water to soften it in. 
And straight away now that starts to, instead of being just a patch of white paper, it starts to have the feeling of a bit of, a bit of land. And I'm going to take a bit of tissue and just streak some of it across to soften it slightly. And then before the next stage, that has to be left to dry. And now with a number four brush and some more of that mixture of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, I'm just redefining these little fence posts in the distance that I've protected with masking fluid, just sharpening them up a bit so they have a bit more impact. Loosen up the shapes round where the ground is so that it looks a little bit untidy and cluttered like an old farmyard. Now I'm going to take a bit more of the burnt sienna and ultramarine blue and round about the ground where the, where the barn meets the ground suggests a little bit of untidiness, a bit of clutter, some little bits of timber, rocks and stones, nothing in any great detail but just to sort of emphasize the effect that this is a little bit untidy. Okay now still with this mixture of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue but even darker now, I'm adding more ultramarine blue to it to darken it. Let's look at these fence posts and using a bit of dry brush work so that it looks more weathered, get the dark side of those in. There's one over here as well. And then with some of the colour I used on the wall of the barn, we'll add a touch of warmth into those as well. A little bit of that warm colour on these fence posts in the distance here, but still trying to leave a bit of a few hints of white to look like snow on this old fence. Now just a, a little bit more work with the shadow colour, that cobalt blue and rose matter. Light coming from the left hand side, so let's have some shadow from these old fence posts. And perhaps there'd be a few bits of stone around the bottom of them, a few weeds and things. Just a little bit of work with the point of the brush. Same around the bottom of the tree. And again, the tree now needs some shadow from that tree. I'm going to take a number eight brush, pick up some more of that shadow mixture. Thinking about the direction of the light, I'm bringing that across from the bottom of the tree right across the picture behind the fence post and it's not enough to just do a shadow from the tree trunk there's all that branch work as well that's going to cast shadows across the middle distance there okay I think there's a few trees to the left and behind the barn that would maybe just catch the roof a few shadows just sort of catch the roof of the barn with the very tip of this number eight brush and then again where the distant wood meets the snow, let's put a little bit of detailing in to look like discarded wood. A little bit of work with the dry brush. Also, a good idea would be to remember that there could well be some trees off to the left-hand side that are out of the scene that are casting shadows into the scene. So let's put some of that across there. Still working with that nice warm shadow colour. Maybe in the very foreground there, just to really sort of bring it down and when you darken the foreground slightly it helps to make this the center of interest look even brighter there's just one more little finishing touch i want to add now to sharpen up the picture and emphasize the fact that it's got snow on it and i'm going to take opaque white take the tube off the paint and just using a detailer brush dip it straight into the opaque white it's important that you don't dilute this paint it is only opaque when it's thick. If you, if you water it down at all, it looks more gray than white. And there's little areas like the, the side of this tree trunk where we could have had a bit of snow settled on it. So I'm just going to try and use this to highlight that. Looks like, almost like drifting snow that's, that's settled on the bark. And another reason for keeping your brush dry and the paint quite thick is that it helps to create a feeling of the texture of the bark you would get a bit of snow settling into the crooks of the branches. There's an area on the point of the roof of the barn there where uh, the masking fluid shape is a little bit rounded. I'm just going to sharpen that up a bit. Uh, an area where I could have done with leaving a little bit more masking fluid there and so I can revive that with a little bit of this opaque white. 
And that's another is another thing you can use it for. If you've not got the masculine fluid in quite the right place you want it, you can use this to revive a few areas. Like for instance, on this fence post here, we can sort of pick that out and that one as well by just a little touch of the opaque white. But very important not to overdo it. So I think that's completed now. Now this has been quite a simple scene, nothing too complicated, but I feel it has got a bit of sparkle and a bit of life into it. It's important with snow scenes that you remember they don't have to make you feel cold. And so I've used that nice warm brown made of raw sienna and burnt sienna to make it look like the sun's shining on the wall of the barn. Also, just, think, just look at how important the shadows are to make it all look three-dimensional. Now available on DVD. Try these techniques yourself at home whenever you wish. Today's workshop is now available to order on DVD from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.